Kenya versus Uganda. Let's get into it. All right, guys, welcome back to another one. Um, as you can, as you know, um, I've been in Kenya for a few weeks and now I'm back in Uganda. So I wanted to make this video when I got back to Uganda. So let's get into it. Um, let's talk infrastructure. Um, I'll give that to Kenya because um, as you, you guys know, if you've been to Kenya, you already know. And, if, if, you know, if you've been watching my videos, you've seen what I've showed you around um, Nairobi and also when I went to uh, Mombasa. Now, um, I've been to Uganda for a while. I come here often. But in my opinion, my humble opinion, you guys can agree or disagree. It's cool. Uh, in my humble opinion, Kenya, when it comes to infrastructure, um, the way things work, as I'm going to talk about um, more of that as the video goes on, infrastructure, um, systems, the way the systems work smoothly, I'll give it to Kenya, man. Um, services as well, better services. Uh, for example, um, when I was booking my hotels, um, everything was smooth. Uh, the professionalism levels are high. Um, all the hosts that hosted me at the apartments I stayed at. Uh, in, Mon in Nairobi, also when I went to Mombasa as well, very professional. They run the systems very well in Kenya. Also, um, I'll give you an example. Like when you go to like a supermarket, for example, in Kenya. Look, an ent the entrance is the entrance and the exit is the exit. There's no way, because um, I remember one time I tried to um, I, I tried to exit through the entry um, side and the security guard on the door was like, uh, excuse me, sir, this is just the, the entry, the entrance. Uh, you're going to use the exit. So they enforce all the laws very well. And also, for example, I was going from the Comba Market and we were going uptown. We were taking border borders and my border border rider went through an area where border borders are not supposed to go through and there were some agents that stopped us and told him hey you're not supposed to be going through so they really enforce the law really well in kenya so all right um and they do that more than in my opinion they do that better than uganda here because border borders here in kampala uganda overall they'll go through a one-way system and you know they'll go through a red light you know um which is not the same in kenya so they enforce the law better in kenya in my opinion and the services are smoother in Kenya, in my opinion. So you guys can disagree or agree. It's all good. I'm just giving you guys my opinion. All right, let's move on. Weather. Uh, the weather is pretty much the same. I mean, um, Uganda all year round, um, um, the weather is mainly very hot, you know, warm and all of that good stuff. Obviously, they've got the rain seasons from around May, May for like a month or something. And then uh, another rain season around November um, towards November and then through uh, December as well. Um, so the weather is pretty much good all year round here in Uganda. Um, in Nairobi, um, during the day, um, when I was there anyway, uh, during the day it was sunny, warm and everything. But then in the afternoon, it was getting a bit chilly. So you have to expect that. So maybe it's the time that I went to um, Nairobi. But I would say if you're going to Nairobi, take a hoodie or a jacket just in case um, for evening times. And also when I was in Mombasa, during the day, you know, the weather was nice, nice and warm, um, nice breeze in the air and stuff. But in the evening, um, it tend to get a bit wind, like the wind picks up a bit more and also it gets a little bit chilly um, in Mombasa as well. So yeah, so if you're going to Kenya in general, just carry a hoodie or two or maybe a jacket. All right, let's move on. You know, when I'm making these videos, um, sometimes I make my notes, so let's go. Transportation. Now, um, here in Uganda, they've got the, their form of transportation is um, border borders, obviously taxes uh, on the roads and of course people's personal cards. They've got the same in Kenya as well. They've got obviously border borders. They've got people obviously got their personal cards and they've got taxes as well, which they call matatus in Kenya. But when you go to Mombasa and also certain places in Nairobi, they've got tuk-tuks. Um, which people, my people for me, Ethiopia will call rickshaws. So they've got tuk-tuks in Nairobi as well. So especially in Mombasa and tuk-tuks are everywhere, which adds on to, uh, which gives you another option for transportation. So if you can't take a border border, take a tuk-tuk. If you don't have a car, you can use a matatu as well. So transportation, they've got more options in Kenya in general than Uganda. And of course, in Kenya, they've got SGR trains as well. That take you from Nairobi to Mombasa, which I fell in love with. I mean, that's amazing for me. Another thing that you know I'll give to Kenya, man. You guys are doing really well when it comes to transportation. 
Um, so with transportation, I'll give it to Kenya, man. They've got more options. And also, um, when I was in Nairobi as well, even though it's a busy city, the traffic, um, even around um, rush hour, um, morning times, even in the evening times, the traffic, you can still see the traffic is, is organized chaos, if there is any chaos. It's organized, well organized as well. So transportation, man, I'll give it to Kenya, man. You guys are doing a great job. And like I said, the SGR train that takes you from Nairobi to Mombasa, wow i was in love like i fell in love with that man i wish you know uganda can use you know can you know start using the trains systems here as well i don't know what's going on with that about transportation 100 percent i'll give it to kenya man when it comes to food okay food now um when i was in kenya um obviously i was excited to try out the local food you know with the ugali sukuma wiki and all of that good stuff nyamachoma and stuff i tried it when i got there it's nice and stuff like that but when it comes to more options with food um i'll have to give it to uganda also uh, i'll be a little bit biased uh with uganda because obviously my background is ugandan so i'll um i'll say uganda has more options with food and of course i'm sure you kenyans will agree as well because most of your food is you know uh exported from uganda or if you're in kenya it's imported from uganda to you guys so um Uganda's got more options, um, obviously with the matoke, uh, the yam, the cassavas and all of that good stuff. And of course here in Uganda as well, just the same as Kenya, they've got, you know, uh, Western restaurants um, like KFC. They've got KFC in Kenya, they've got KFC in Uganda, they've got Subways in, um, you know, in Kenya. Um, I don't remember seeing Subways here in Uganda, guys. If there is a Subways here in Kampala or Uganda, let me know. I don't remember seeing it. I remember back in the days I saw Nando's here in, in Kampala, but I don't know if Nando's still, is still here in Kampala. If there is, let me know, guys, in the comments. And, of course, Kenya have got um, Java, Cafe Javas and Java House, and they've got the same here in Uganda as well. Those are restaurants. And, of course, they've got other foreign restaurants. You know, um, you can find... Chinese restaurants in Kenya, you can find some Chinese restaurants here, Thai restaurants in Kampala. So when it comes to foreign restaurants, uh, both countries have a variety. But when it comes to um, homegrown foods, I'll give it to Uganda when it comes to food, man. Obviously, they've got more foods here. Even on the streets here, when you're walking in Uganda, there's food everywhere. There's more options. There. If, you want, if you want street food, you just turn on, go down the road and get street food. It's, street foods are not really popular in Kenya, in Nairobi, and also in um, Mombasa, which I'll talk about a bit more because I think it contributes to um, the cleanliness of their cities. Um, here in Uganda, obviously, there's a lot of street food. So similar thing when I, what I saw in Ethiopia as well. Street food is not really that popular, but this video is about Uganda and Kenya. So more foods here, more food options here in Uganda. So with, with the food, with the options, varieties, I'll give it to Uganda. All right, let's move on. Um, accommodations, um, like I, I mentioned it, um, earlier, when it comes to professionalism, the host and that, but when it comes to overall accommodation, when I'm here in Uganda, mainly I stay at my family homes, like one of these homes here, and I've rented, like I've stayed at hotels here in Uganda as well, I've stayed in apartments here, a, a few apartments here in Kampala as well. Um, so accommodation is kind of similar, but um, like I said, Professionalism, I'll give it to Kenya as well as security. Even though um, the apartments are stayed in Uganda here, the, uh, the security was pretty good, but the hosts weren't, in my opinion, they weren't as professional as I would like them to. Sometimes you wouldn't be able to get in contact with them or sometimes they'll pass you on to somebody else. Um, and you get, they'll give you your con their contacts when you're booking the property. And then when you move in, you won't get access to them. Um, I remember one, one of my hosts here, this a few years ago, one of my hosts here, um, I was getting in contact with him when I was booking the apartment uh, before I flew in from London. When I got here, she told me, hey, I'm not available. I've traveled, but, you know, talk to this person, which is, is cool or whatever. But I just thought it was a bit weird. I've been communicating with you all along. And then when I get to the country, you pass me on to somebody else. You should have told me before I flew in. But... With Kenya, um, accommodation, um, everything was good, checking in. The also, um, I remember when, I flew, when, when we got to Nairobi um, from Kampala, um, we arrived early in the morning. So I got contact, in, I got contact um, with the people that are hosting the apartment. I stayed at in Nairobi and I said to them, hey, um, I know the check-in time is around 12 or something, 
but is it okay if I check in early? They said to me, it will be fine as long as you know your apartment is ready. So when I got there, um, unfortunately the apartment wasn't ready yet, but they, you know, they got it ready as soon as possible, and I was able to check in. So they didn't limit me to only check-in time. They didn't tell me no, you have to wait until this proper check-in time, blah blah blah. And also, when I was checking out um, to go to Mombasa, uh, my train was in in the afternoon, and check uh, check-up time was around eleven or twelve. I asked them for late checkup and they were fine with it. They let me check out a bit late as well, stayed a few more hours in the apartment. And yeah, so that was great. Thank you, people. Um, yeah, so when it comes to accommodation, I'll give the edge to Kenya as well. Um, even though there is some good accommodations here, but the professionalism, everything goes together. So I'll give the edge to Kenya. Right, let's talk nightlife. You guys, if you follow me a lot, or even if you guys follow me on social media, you know your boy likes to have a good time. I like to have a, you know, to party a bit here whenever here I'm in Kampala or whenever I travel anywhere else, even when I was in Ethiopia, when I was in India. So nightlife in Kenya versus nightlife in Kampala. Pretty similar to be fair because Kampala is a city that never sleeps. Uh, forget New York, this is Kampala. But when I went to Kenya, they're the same. Like <laughs> these guys party from Monday to Sunday. You know, like I remember um, we arrived in, when we left Nairobi, well, we got to Nairobi uh, I partied at the weekend on Saturday, then the following week, uh, around Tuesday or Wednesday, that's when I traveled to um, to Mombasa and, you know, we went out to get some food in the evening and also I felt like having some shisha and stuff, so I asked people around, hey, is there a bar here, we can get some shisha? On a Tuesday, so they directed me to a bar, when we got there, they called it a bar, but it was a club. <laughs> so, you know, they're operating, you know, playing music, there were people in there drinking or whatever, not as busy as... It was when we went back on the weekends, but yeah, so nightlife is similar, Kampala and, you know, Kenya. Both pe people in both countries party a lot, but funny enough, when you ask people in Kenya, who, who's got better nightlife, who parties the most, who, better, who parties more than the other, they all say <laughs> Kampala people drink more than us, but we, you know, so they, there is that kind of a rivalry, you know, but in my opinion, the, the nightlife is similar, even though I think, in my opinion, I've went to two. I went to two clubs in ninety three, I think, um, including a bar in Kenya. They the clubs in Kenya are much much more spacious, and also their clubs um, they'll be they'll be open as well. So the way you know the clubs you know are built or whatever, like I like the designs and stuff, and also they got some good DJs as well, which are a bit similar. So the nightlife really and truly is a bit. Uh, I'll give it. You know, I'll give them both. Thumbs up, nightlife here in Kampala, because I party a lot here in Kampala. A, few, a lot of bars here, different clubs here, similar to Kenya as well. So nightlife, I'll kind of give it, I'll, I'll, it's a draw when it comes to nightlife, because when I was in Kenya, I had a good time. And also when I was here, I had a good time. But you know what? Forget that. I'm not going to give it a draw. I'm going to give it to Uganda. I'm going to give the win when it comes to nightlife to Uganda, and I'll tell you why. Reason being, when I was in Nairobi, or oh, when I was in Nairobi and also when I was in uh, Mombasa, when I was trying to smoke some shisha, I don't know if it's overall in Kenya or just the places I went to, when it comes to shisha, they don't really have a variety of flavors. If you guys smoke shisha, you know what I'm talking about. They only had a few limited flavors when I was in Mombasa. I went to the same club like three times in Mombasa. I don't want to say the name, but they also, but they only had like four flavors. Like every time I'd go there, I'd be like, hey, do you have any different, do you have more different flavors? They're like, no, it's the same flavors, blah, blah, blah. Our boss doesn't, you know, ah, it was a bit annoying, you know? So yeah, but here in Kampala, when you go to a bar, they've got a variety of flavors. So nightlife, I'll give it to Kampala, man, to Uganda. Okay, now let's move to the ladies. I know you guys want to, you know, always hear me talk about ladies and stuff. Look, beautiful ladies everywhere, in Uganda and Kenya. That's it. That's where I'm going to go with that. <laughs> you can find beautiful ladies everywhere. So ladies, both places got beautiful ladies, just like everywhere else in the world. That's what I'm going to say about that. So let's move to um, mobile, not even mobile, but phone systems. Look, straight away, I'm going to give this to Kenya, man. There's this system they've got in Kenya called M-Pesa that I've been you know, going on about, shouting about in my videos when I was in Kenya. Look, that's an amazing system. If you're in Uganda, M-Pesa is kind of similar to mobile money here in Uganda. It's a system that, you know, you can put money on your phone and use that system to pay for, you know, goods, you know, 
you can go shopping and pay using your mobile money if you're in Uganda, same as in Pesa in you know in in Kenya. But the only difference is I prefer me personally, I prefer M Pesa. It's an app, you know, you upload it on your phone and then you register with the app and then you put your money on there. The good thing about M-Pesa when you're paying for goods, most of the times they don't charge you for, um, they don't charge you for, you know, withdraw charges or whatever. If you're sending somebody money using M-Pesa to their M-Pesa, they don't charge you for withdraw charges that they do here in Uganda. When you're using mobile money and you're sending somebody mobile money in Uganda, they always tell you, hey, add some extra money on top for, for my withdrawal charges, which is annoying. But M-Pesa is not like that. And also, I find M-Pesa is easier. You know, you can just use your, you know, have a password, you know, a, a pin code or you just use your, you know, fingerprint to get into your app. And it's pretty much secure. And also, it's literally very, very easy to use. I find mobile money annoying, man. You have to enter codes all the time. Then select number one. Select this for sending money. Then confirm. I know M-Pesa is much, much better. Kenya... I love your M-Pesa system, man. So when it comes to phone systems and, you know, payments using phones and all of that stuff, it's amazing. Also, thank you guys in Kenya. You were, you've been uh, telling me that um, you guys were the first people to come up with that system, paying with, phone, with phones and stuff like that in the world or in Africa. So, yeah, man, kudos to you guys, man. I love M-Pesa, man. It's an amazing system. I wish Uganda could use M-Pesa. Also, I know Ugandans are going to be like, yeah, but we do have M-Pesa in Uganda, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but you don't use it to buy goods like you do with mobile money. I think, me, I think oh, I was told um, that you use M-Pesa to send money um, to somebody who's in a different country to transfer money, not to buy goods here in Uganda like you do with mobile money. So I wish, you know, they can implement that in Uganda, man, use M-Pesa as well, man. It's an amazing system. So I'll give that to Kenya, man. Your M-Pesa system, amazing, man. I love it. Is, and for you guys that are watching from Europe or Western countries, M-Pesa is kind of similar to like Apple Pay or whatever. You know, when you use your Apple Pay to pay for stuff. So it's kind of similar like that. But, you know, you get money, you can put cash on your M-Pesa. So, for example, you go to a cash machine, you've drawn money, um, and then you go to an agent, um, an M-Pesa agent, and you, you know, give, you give them your money and then they'll, you know, top up your M-Pesa system. Literally, when you go to Kenya, make sure, you, you know, you're using M-Pesa because... Literally, it's almost impossible in Kenya, everywhere you go, to use cash. I, you guys, like, I always tell you guys I carry cash most of the times whenever I'm in Uganda. In Kenya, it's literally pointless to, quite, you know, to carry cash. You go somewhere to pay for cash, they'll be like, oh, no. Even, ch they, won't, they, they don't have no change, they don't carry no money. They'll be like, oh, boss, oh, no change, and pesa. Literally, there's no point. I was carrying some cash and also putting money on M-Pesa. I'll be like, oh, you know what, just in case I'll need some cash. Yo, everywhere you go in Kenya, everybody uses M-Pesa. So it's an amazing system, man. And also, you don't run into a, you know, the, you know, um, a risk of losing your cash because sometimes you might be walking around somewhere, you know, put your hand in your pocket and you lose cash or if in your wallet and you lose your cash. So amazing system, M-Pesa, man. Right, next, let's talk about one of the most important things, well, especially to me, a content creator, um, phone networks and internet, phone internet overall. Now, look, there's not even an argument with that. Let's start with phone um, networks. Um, when I got to Nairobi, um, I was recommended um, by a few people to get this network called Safaricom. And that's exactly what I did. If you guys watched my first video when I landed there, first thing I did was go to the mall and sort out my SIM cards. Safaricom, amazing network. They've got up to like 4G. I don't know if the, <clears throat> the network goes up to 5G as well. But I had no issues whatsoever the whole time I was in Kenya. Even when I traveled all the way up to Mombasa, network stayed consistent. It was an amazing network, Safaricom. So I recommend it. If you're going to Nairobi or Kenya, uh, overall, try Safaricom. And this is not like a paid advertisement, advertisement or whatever. It was an amazing network. I had no issue with it whatsoever. Even my guy Ash I was with, we got the same. We didn't complain about it. Everywhere we went, network was strong. So amazing. Safaricom. Thumbs up. Now let's talk about the internet overall on the phone and also Wi-Fi at the apartment where I was staying at and in both um, both cities, Nairobi and Mombasa. Wi-Fi was amazing, very fast. I had no issues when I was uploading videos while I was there. And yeah, so when it comes to phone network that I was using um, and also internet, of course, Kenya wins that by a mile. No debate about that. Kenya wins that. Um, when I'm here in Kampala, 
Um, I use Airtel when I'm here in Kampala. I mean, it's cool, it's good. Um, I've got a network mostly everywhere, but <clears throat> most people will tell you as well, like some places you might go to and there's no network or you might get, you know, some problems with network. But in Kenya, I had no issues with phone network whatsoever. And also, internet here in Kampala, it's a bit expensive for no reason. I don't understand why. It's, so, it's, it's more expensive than Kenyan internet. Internet in Kenya, in my opinion, is cheaper than Uganda and you get more um what you get more for what you paid for in kenya than you do in uganda so um yeah so pricing with internet i, I believe in my opinion kenyan internet is cheaper and you get way more obviously um it lasts longer i took i paid for internet on my phone once when i landed in nairobi man and i was there for like just under two weeks or over two weeks um i paid um i, I don't remember the package I, I actually paid for but regardless um my internet was like literally um was still ongoing until i um until i left you know kenya here in uganda you top up you people that live in uganda you know what i'm talking about you top up here into you buy internet for a week or whatever weekly or whatever and then in a day or two it's finished so internet here in uganda is nah, it's trash to me in my opinion you don't get you know what you pay for and network sometimes is trash wi-fi in the apartments I was staying in, Wi-Fi was amazing. Um, network connection was good. Um, no issues with, you know, uploading speeds were amazing. I used to upload videos for like, you know, like five, 10 minutes. Like literally it was fast everywhere I went to, even in Mombasa. Here, literally when I'm here, I'm in my bedroom right now. I literally, my um, internet, <laughs> my internet was literally connections right here. I literally, if I'm over there on the bed, like it might take me a few more minutes to upload a video that I'll, will be quicker here so you have to kind of the closer you are the better so it's kind of annoying so internet kenya wins that by a mile no doubt okay so guys that was it um you know uganda you know kenya versus uganda i don't know who got the most wins but yeah you guys will count i'm not counting i'm just gonna i was just going through points to points and giving a win to different you know people but it is what it is those are my humble opinions you can agree you can disagree it's all good. That was Kenya versus Uganda. All right, guys. I'll um, catch you on the next one. Peace.